Hey guys, John Gray here, and today's video is about starting a business, whether you should or shouldn't. Um, someone asked me today if I thought it was even worth it, you know, for someone who has a corporate job right now, is it worth starting a business? Is it a good idea? And, you know, my short answer is, yeah, absolutely. But I think what needs to be talked about is how you become really practical about starting that business. So that's what I want to talk to you about today and sort of apply that to myself and talk about what you know I'm doing to sort of get practical. So um, starting a business, I think, is in everyone's best interest because it allows you to, you know, be your own boss, to work, you know, work for yourself essentially, and also to do that while doing something you really like to do, hopefully, you know, hopefully people are starting businesses because they found uh, something they really enjoy and that brings them as much joy as it does the people that they're serving or, you know, selling to. So with that being said, I think you need to think about two things um, that you should try to avoid when, when starting any business and especially like a smaller business. Um, and the first of those is getting romantic or you know marrying yourself to the idea that you had in the first place and how you're going about doing it. So don't get married to your first idea of how to execute your business. And two, uh, try to avoid not being practical about the finances around your business. So I'll talk to the first one first because I think that's probably where a lot of people get uh, lost when they're married to the idea and then also the finances so what do I mean when I say uh, don't get married to the execution of the idea so I think a lot of people when they first think of you know what they think their business will be they have a very clear thing in mind and they say to themselves yes I'm going to do this so I'll give you an example let's say you wanted to start a you know pizza place but it was going to be the healthiest and tastiest pizza place ever, right? So you had this idea, you went out and got recipes, you you know, you know made the best pizza that you thought uh, was available, and you go out and start selling pizzas right away, and nothing happens. You So you've, you've quit your job, you've, you've completely given up on corporate life, and you've shoved all into this business, because that's what a lot of business owners will tell you. Um, you know, you gotta be all in on your business. And that's fine, but in this scenario, let's say you do that and you don't get the sales that you expect. And not only that, but the marketplace doesn't respond to your whole healthy pizza idea in the way that you thought, thought they would. So now you got to go back to the drawing board, which is going to cost you time, and completely retool to see if this is viable, first of all, and see what you might need to change in order to make this successful going forward. And I think a lot of people are doing that. Um, when they should be doing it in reverse, you know, you need to figure out how applicable your idea is to the marketplace before you do any type of purchasing or, you know, selling of any kind to anyone. You know, you might be surprised that some of the, you know, your best ideas just fall on deaf ears. It might, just because it's a good idea to you doesn't mean that it's, you know, a good idea to everyone and that everyone's going to accept it. Um, now, that doesn't mean that your original idea is completely worthless. It might just be that you need to completely retool how you deliver that idea to the people that you're trying to reach. So first, I would say you need to get practical about, you know, getting real hard data around if people even like or are willing to pay for your product or service. And that can be as simple as in the pizza example, going out making this pizza, but before you ever go look for a building or look for investors or any of that, going outside with a hundred or a thousand samples of this pizza and just giving the samples out for free to people and having them write a little card and saying, you know, what would you rate this pizza on a scale of one to five? And would you order this over your number one pizza place that you go to on weekends? I mean, it's it's super simple, but it gives you a perspective on what people in your area or wherever area you go to are willing to buy and if they even want your product. Because if they don't, then what's the point? I mean, you've essentially pigeonhole yourself all for something that you thought was going to be a really good idea without you know going into the market and figuring it out. So 
I think that's probably you know one of the things that's that's hard for people who really are passionate about their idea, and it doesn't mean you need to give it up. Like I said, it just needs, means you need to figure out the best way to deliver it. And I don't think people think through that right away. Um, I'll give you a better practical example with myself, just so that you know, you know, I'm practicing what I preach here. Um, finances and especially personal finance with you know friends, family is a really big deal to me. It's something that. I want to continue to do in the future and make a business out of one day. I don't know what that business is going to look like, but there was a point when I first started this channel and you know started making videos that I thought the business was going to be you know making an app that was way better than all the other apps, and my app was just going to be super super good, and you know that was going to beat all the apps and people were going to use it and people were going to pay for it. So what I realized after doing some research and talking to some people is one, there's a lot of free services already that people use and fail with. So, you know, Mint is a great example. Lots of people download that app and people are still in debt. So clearly apps by themselves don't do very much because apps can't make you save money. They can suggest that you save money. They can tell you how bad your spending was in the previous month, but they can't make you do the actions. And then when I found out, after talking to individual people about their specific uh, money situations, was that it wasn't a matter of them not knowing what they should be doing, but it was a matter of holding themselves accountable. Because the other problem with Mint apps, you know, apps like Mint, is that when you set a goal for yourself in Mint, all that they do is flash a little red bar in front of your face and say, you didn't hit it. Okay, great. Now what? You've passed your budget, you haven't hit your goal, and no one's held you accountable for it. So what I realized is that people are a lot more willing to hold themselves accountable when they know they're talking to another person. So because people, when they are talking to other people, feel guilty in a sense that they're not doing what they've agreed upon with another physical person. And that's something that, that's one thing that technology doesn't provide all the time. So I found that the people that I was talking to on a regular basis were doing really well with their budgets. And some of them even said, I do that, I do really well because I know that we're gonna talk about it and I don't want you to see a number that's you know not conducive to what we talked about. So. You know, that completely changed my mindset around the whole app idea. And I'm not, obviously I'm not doing that anymore. So, you know, I would just say, get practical, learn about what people actually think and what actually people do, and uh, apply that to your idea and see how it changes. Because I'm, I'm pretty sure that in most cases, there's at least one little small thing you can tweak. Um, and then the second thing is being practical about the finances. So. We talked about how you know not knowing how the market will affect your product can get you in trouble. It can do that even more so when you are all in on your idea to the point where you have finance things. And I feel like that is, for me, that is the biggest detriment to small businesses right now. They have so many payments, so many, they're putting so much of their own money in payments into businesses because they borrowed a lot of money and capital from banks when they should have probably just started off small and used their working capital to you know make the money for them and then they could have reduced some of their risk so i'll give you uh, you know another example so the, the pizza place for example um if you're you know have a corporate job and you're you're, you're leasing a building for example because you you, know, you have to you have to get some place to eventually, you know, sell your pizza, um, and you didn't do any of that research that we had talked about, and you find out that people aren't buying my pizzas. So what are you gonna do now? You're probably gonna go back, retool your recipe, figure out what's wrong with it. That's gonna take time, especially if you're doing it right. So you do all of that, you know, maybe six months go by, and you haven't made money in that six months. If you don't have a job, you're potentially setting yourself up to be bankrupt. And not only that, but you're setting your, your dream up to be this catch-all. So your dream essentially turns into this necessity and it needs to make money instead of you know giving you the joy it was supposed to give you when you dreamt it up in the first place. So in my opinion, it's a lot better to just go slow. 
You don't need a building to sell pizzas. You could get a cart and sell pizzas outside if you really wanted to. And that just comes down to hustle. And what that cart will let you do that a building won't tell you until you're already in debt is whether people actually want your pizza and like it. I mean, you have to test in some respect before you get into market. And I feel like that's the exact opposite of what we hear from people who are entrepreneurs. They like they're like get in, you know, get in the market, get there, be first, be quick and, you know, make yourself known. Well, that's great, but if your product sucks and you don't know it, then being first isn't worth being first. So I think that you need to be very practical about how much money it actually takes to do what it is you want to do and figure out how much of that capital you can raise yourself and how much work you can do, free work, to just time to put into your business so that you're not spending hundreds of thousands of dollars in some cases all for this dream that never pans out. You know, you don't, that's not, not what you want. You don't want your businesses to become this failed dream. And I feel like that's what happens to a lot of people. They buy this building, they thought it was going to be great, and then nothing ends up happening. So in my opinion, you know, for the, the pizza the example, is, you know, that's what I would do. I would go out, sell pizzas in a cart. I would let everybody know on every street corner that I have the best pizza in the world. I'd give people a bunch of coupons or I'd, you know, I'd, I'd start buying, uh, you know, Domino's pizza and all those fancy other pizzas and I start lining them up against my pizza and tell them, you know, say which one of these is better. And if they say, you know, the regular pizza, then I'm going back and I'm retooling my recipe. You know, I think you have to have that mindset. You have to be best before you can be first. And you know, that's something that one of my favorite media people uh, or marketing people, Gary Vaynerchuk always says, it's not worth being first if you're not the best because the people who win in the marketplace are those who are the best, not who, those who are first. Give you a perfect example, social media. Who is first to social media? Things like MySpace tagged. Who goes to those sites now? Do you, do you have a MySpace? No, because even though they were first, they got lazy and they aren't the best. So you go to the places that continue to innovate. There's a reason that although Facebook was not first to the social media game, they're on top still because they didn't stop innovating. When Instagram came out, they bought Instagram. There's a reason why they are doing so well. So I just want you to think about having patience because patience is a virtue when you're starting your own business and it will prevent you from causing your business to be a nightmare instead of the dream that you wanted it to be in the first place. So that's what I would do. And uh, just to show you that I'm doing that right now, YouTube, great example. Like I have hardly no subscribers, like a very, very low number of subscribers compared to some of the YouTube channels out there. But all I'm doing right now, which is completely free to me, by the way, is putting out content, free content about what I'm doing, what I would do and documenting my journey so that people can know that, you know, I first practice what I preach and that I'm going to eventually have credibility so that when people say, how do you know about business? What do you, you know, what do you know? I can go back to these videos so they can go back and say, oh yeah, he actually built something based on what he's telling me to do. And then do as much work in your free time as you can. Even with a corporate job that you're working 40 to 60 hours a week, there's a lot of time in there still. You know, if this is your dream, be willing to bleed for it. You know, put in the work. And I think that if you're doing that, it's very likely that you'll have a successful business. It might not be as quickly as you, you know, wanted it to be, but it'll happen. But that is all that I have for today. That is my opinion on owning and starting a business. Um, just be patient. Don't take out exorbitant amounts of debt to start your dream. Learn as much as you can about your product or service um, and what the marketplace will be once you uh, start to sell or start to provide your service. And don't get married to the idea. You're likely going to have to change something. So don't marry the execution. Learn how to adapt to the market so that you can provide the best service possible or best product possible. Um, so thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to like it or share it with someone that you know. Um, and feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to see more videos like this. All right, thanks. Bye.